Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to compare these top-end mesh Wi-Fi's to each other. They're all capable of Wi-Fi 6E and they are backwards compatible with previous wireless standards. So I've done individual reviews for each one of these. If you guys are interested, I'll put those links in the description below. So in this video, I'm going to do a comparison between their speed test performance in terms of wired and wireless backhaul and also their range test. And I've used my iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device, and my Pixel 6 Pro, which is my Wi-Fi 6E device, for all those tests. And at the end, I'll give you guys my overall opinion on kind of like which one is best for what. But overall, I will have a winner in terms of which one is the best. Starting with the least expensive, this is the Asus ET8, which has a retail price of $529 in the US for a two pack, as you guys can see here. So Asus advertises this thing to cover up to 5,500 square feet or 510 square meters between the both of these. It is a tri-band unit, so it has a 2.4 gigahertz band, a 5 gigahertz band, and a 6 gigahertz band. Important thing to note, only Wi-Fi 6E devices can connect to the 6 gigahertz band. The other devices, so Wi-Fi 6 or anything below, can't see the 6 gigahertz band, so it can't even connect to it. And in this case, the Wi-Fi 6E, that 6 gigahertz band, can act as the wireless backhaul channel, which is actually pretty fast. Okay. So looking at the ports, we have starting with a USB 3.0 port, which you can essentially hook up a hard drive, an external hard drive to this, and you could share it within the network. So devices on the same network can access it, can read and write from it. And it has a WAN port, which can support up to 2.5 gigabits. And it has three other LAN ports. Now the LAN ports can only support gigabit, which is unfortunate because if you were gonna do wired backhaul between this guy to this guy, you would, this, this guy can only go as fast as gigabit. So if you did have internet, fa internet speeds faster than gigabit, then the secondary one, you pretty much wouldn't get those speeds. So it is kind of unfortunate that they don't put an additional 2.5 gigabit port. Okay, so we have a power switch and then we have the power adapter and the power adapter for this one is fairly small. It's actually the smallest of the three. So, it has a speed rating of AXE 6600 and it has a whole bunch of options. ASUS has the most options from any one of these and you get an app and you also get access to a browser and honestly there are a ton of options. So jumping into the speed test, I did two different types of speed tests. So the first one was just a simple internet speed test with the speed test app on the phones. So my internet speeds, well, I should mention this. No matter how fast these routers are, when you're accessing the internet, you're limited to your internet speed. So just because this can take internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabit, doesn't actually mean I'm gonna get those speeds. So I'm personally limited to my own internet speeds that's being provided by my ISP or internet service provider. So my internet speeds are 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. So looking at the results with the Wi-Fi 6 device, we could see that we're actually getting some pretty solid speeds. I mean, it is nowhere near the max capacity. Really the only way I'm gonna get to that max capacity is if I hook up via ethernet on my computer, which when I do a speed test that way, I always max out. Then going into the Wi-Fi 6E device, we could see that there is a bigger jump, especially in the download speeds. And we could see that I am getting closer to those top end speeds. Now, something to keep in mind with public speed test servers, However, even though it is semi-reliable, a true test would be to actually isolate the router itself because with the public speed test server, I'm dependent on my internet service provider and I'm also dependent on the public speed test server itself because it could be used by a lot of people or a lot of companies at the same time. So what I do to alleviate this is essentially when I make my computer my local area speed test server, I go from my phone to my router to my computer, isolating the router. So this is how I did all the remaining tests and this is a true way of isolating it. We could see there is a huge jump in performance because now we're really truly isolating the router as much as possible 
especially with the Wi-Fi 6C device, it is ridiculous in the single router configuration. So this is the case where I have my phone going to the router directly to the computer. So in wireless backhaul, this is when I'm doing the speed test on the secondary device. So this guy's hooked up to my computer server and my phone is hooked up to the second one and that's when I'm doing the speed test. So this guy has to wirelessly talk to this guy on that six gigahertz span and then do the speed test that way, which I still get some really solid speeds. It's These are very, very good speeds considering this is wireless backhaul. And in wired backhaul, so here's the thing that I was explaining earlier, but essentially because this only has one 2.5 gigabit port, as soon as I use this one to wire it to this other guy, this guy can only go as fast as gigabit. So you could see that while the Wi-Fi 6 device really was pretty much identical to the main one, the Wi-Fi 6C device did slow down to almost gigabit speeds. And in terms of range test, I have to say that this did fairly well. So it goes up to 180 feet. This is outside, I cross the street, I go pretty much a few houses down, and this is where it reach, reaches its limitations. But I would say it's a pretty solid router. So I can easily see this thing easily covering my entire house and around the backyard and the front yard and everything else. So good to go. Jumping to the Linksys Atlas Max 6E, there is quite a price hike from this guy to this guy. So this thing has a retail price of $899 for a two pack in the US. And if you want a three pack, that's $1,199 for the three pack. Again, this is retail price. So this thing, Linksys advertises to cover up to 6,000 square feet for the two pack or 557 square meters. It is a tri-band, so it's very similar to the ET8 where you have the 2.4 gigahertz, the five gigahertz, and the six gigahertz band. And it has, looking at the ports, let's go over them. So you have your power adapter, which is actually a lot bigger than the Asus one. So if we were to compare them, so this thing is much larger, but one of the cool things about this one is it can actually support internet speeds of up to five gigabits per second. However, your other LAN ports, so the five gigabits is for the LAN port, the other ports are gigabit ports. So you have four other ones. If you want to expand these, you can hook it up to an unmanaged switch and you should be good to go. And you also have a USB 3.0 port, which you can essentially hook up an external hard drive and share between your devices on the same network. But this has the same problem as the ET8 because if you have internet speeds of pretty much anything larger, anything faster than one gigabit, you essentially on the secondary device, if you do a wired backhaul connection, you would be limited to gigabit on any devices connecting to this guy because this port or any one of these going out to this guy in wired backhaul would can't go faster than gigabit. So it would be nice if they added, if they had two fast ports, and it has a speed rating of AXC 8400. So it is a faster speed rating than the ET8. Doing a speed test, an internet speed test with the Wi-Fi 6 device, we get some normal speeds. And with the Wi-Fi 6E, we get even faster speeds. So again, solid speeds for anything you wanna use with the internet. If you're watching a video or anything like that on the phone, you should be good to go. Moving into the local area speed test, I do the exact same thing as the ET8 where I essentially make my computer the server and I essentially go from phone to router to server and I'm using this program called Open Speed Test Server and I'll do an, a video on that on how to set this up in the future. Doing the speed test in a single router configuration, so going with the main guy, we get crazy fast speeds in Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E. Well, Wi-Fi 6E is really the ridiculous speeds. In wireless backhaul, we still get some very good speeds. However, you'll notice that the Wi-Fi 6E device in wireless backhaul is actually slower than the Wi-Fi 6. Now, this was the weird thing because, I mean, I guess it's really not that weird, but because the Linksys uses the six gigahertz band for the dedicated wireless backhaul channel, when you're doing a speed test on the secondary one, it because it's sharing that it's actually going slower. So if you actually took your Pixel 6 Pro or, or whatever Wi-Fi 6E device you had 
and you connect it to the 5 gigahertz band, you'll actually get faster speeds. And when I did this, I got faster speeds. And I go over this in the review in the Linksys. But for this video, I'm going to just use the Pixel 6 Pro just to connect to the 6 gigahertz band. So it can be an apples to apples comparison. And again, with the wired backhaul, we could see that while the, you know, Wi-Fi 6 is very fast, Wi-Fi 6E is not quite as fast as the single router configuration. And that's because these ports are limiting your speeds. And the range test for this thing is absurd. So essentially, I got all the way up to 350 feet away, which is 107 meters. So essentially, I went outside my place, I crossed the street, I went a few houses down, and I was still getting a connection. Now moving on to the most expensive, we have the Netgear Orbi RBKE963, which has a retail price of $1,499 for a three pack in the US. Currently, there is no two pack option for this. So there are a few differences between these, but essentially a three pack gives you up to 9,000 square feet of coverage, or 836 square meters. So the first thing that's different about this is that it is the world's first quad band mesh Wi-Fi. So it has a 2.4 gigahertz, it has two five gigahertz bands, and it has a six gigahertz band. So one of the five gigahertz bands is used as the dedicated wireless backhaul channel, and you guys will see that it actually gives really good speeds doing that. Okay, so looking at the ports, the other thing that's different about the Orbi compared to the other two is that with the Orbi you get a single router and you get two satellites. Whereas with the Linksys Atlas and the Asus ET8, both of these are actually routers and the one you hook up to your modem acts as the router where the secondary one, even though it's a router, actually acts as a satellite when you connect it to this guy. Whereas with the Orbi you do have to hook up the router to the modem. Whereas with the other ones you can actually choose which one you want to hook up and from there, it will take care of that. Okay, so looking at the ports, it has a WAN port that can support speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second. So if your internet speeds are 10 gigabits per second, this guy is definitely an option for you. It has a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, which you can use for a wired backhaul channel. So if you run this to this guy, you can also get up to 2.5 gigabit internet speeds or ethernet speeds I should say on the secondary one depending on how fast your internet was or if you were trying to talk to a device on your network and you have three other gigabit ports and you have your power adapter which pretty much looks like this so the satellites are identical and you have a 2.5 gigabit port and you have three gigabit ports here and you have the power adapter and it's the same exact one that hooks up to this. So the other thing that, again, is special about this is that because of that 2.5 gigabit port, you do can't, you can get fast speeds on the secondary one, which is untrue for these guys because you're limited to gigabit for these guys, whereas on this one you're not, and you will see that in the speed test. So with the Orbi, you also get a few options with the app, and there is a browser interface with it. So it's more than the Linksys, but less than the Asus. So if you're looking into super customization, Asus is the way to go. So jumping into the internet speed test, we get some normal speeds. Going into the local area speed test, again, very similar to the other ones, we get very fast speeds, especially with the Wi-Fi 6C device. With the wireless backhaul, it's also very, very fast. So it's actually faster than the other two, also in wireless backhaul. In wired backhaul, thanks to that 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, essentially it's identical going through my satellite or my main router. This one also goes crazy far, up to 320 feet away, which is 98 meters. One thing you will notice is that even though this one went slightly less than the Linksys, if you look at the speed comparisons in most cases, not all the cases, but the farther away you get, it doesn't slow down as much with this one. So this one is a little more usable speeds when you're super far away. Now to summarize, I have to say that honestly, all three of these are really good. Mesh Wi-Fi is very fast, very, very good range, especially these two are ridiculous range. So, but just being a bit picky, I would say that it would be nice if the ASUS CT8 had an, an additional 2.5 gigabit ethernet port 
just for wired backhaul on the secondary one to be just as fast on the primary one for Wi-Fi 60 devices. I would say the same exact thing for the Linksys and even Orbi, but getting to the Linksys, I would say, yeah, why not add an additional five gigabit ethernet port because you do support five gigabit internet. So, I mean, if, if I had five gigabit in internet, it would be really, really nice if you had an additional five gigabit so I can run five gig to the secondary one and or even hook it up to a switch and somehow two five gigabits would make it a lot better. And other than that, I would say really my only other gripe, if, if you want to call it that, would be that on the six gigahertz band, when you're in wireless backhaul, because it's using the six gigahertz band for that wireless backhaul, when you hook up Wi-Fi 6E devices to it, they, are, they do run a bit slower. It would be nice if they kind of figured that out to make it run a bit faster. Now, I do realize it is using that for backhaul and totally makes sense. However, so is the ASUS and you still get faster speeds out of them. So on that band, so just a heads up. So this might be resolved with the firmware issue. I don't know, but anyways, those are my really two things with the Linksys. Other than that, it's really, really good. And with the Nekia Orbi, I mean, this thing is phenomenal. Amazing wireless backhaul speeds, amazing wired backhaul speeds. That's thanks to its 2.5 gigabit port. However, because of the price, I do have to say, it'd be nice if it had two 10 gigabit ethernet ports. That way I could honestly truly run a full 10 gigabit ethernet network throughout my home because I already have a 10 gigabit ethernet switch. So, and I'm running Cat7 cables. So this would be perfect if it had that. Another thing just worth mentioning is that both the ASUS and the Linksys have parental controls included, but with Orbi, if you want their smart parental controls, you do actually have to pay a subscription for it, which is weird. Why, why would you need to do that? I mean, it costs $1,500. <laughs> I feel like it should be included in the price. I mean, this thing costs almost a third of the price and it's included. So guys, it should be included with, with, with this setup. So, but other than that, so essentially best bang for your buck is the ASUS CT8. This is an amazing choice. And honestly, for a lot less money, it's not too far off from these two. So very, very good, solid choice with a whole bunch of options. And best performance goes to the Nike Orbi because I mean, this thing is just crazy fast, wired and wireless backhaul. I mean, essentially this is the best mesh Wi-Fi device out right now so anyways let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below as always smash that subscribe button and i'll catch you guys in the next one